did you find any more tissue paper? Well, not yet, Miss Raymond. I had to brush up these shoes, and these just came back from the clean. Mrs. Harold. I'm coming. Did you finish the ironing? Yes. Here's everything. Good. I'll take it up. And would you please see if you could find more tissue paper? Mrs. Craig can't finish her packing without it. I'll try, but she's going to have more paper in those bags than clothes. Well, you know how careful she is about her things. Hello? Oh, yes. Were you able to get us our reservation? Good. Just a minute, please. Lottie, would you take these up, please? But she just sent me down for the tissue paper. Mrs. Harold's looking for it. But I... Lottie, please, Mrs. Harold will do it. Well, all Hello. right, but I bet Mrs. Craig don't wait for me to explain that. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. Oh, Mrs. Harold, would you answer the doorbell, please? All right. What's the number of that room? But I told you she wanted a drawing room. A compartment's too small. Well, I don't think she'll like this. I... Mrs. Harold... Oh, I'm sorry. They won't go away, Hello? Miss Raymond. Would you give me the number of the compartment, please? Well, I I'll try to explain it. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Fraser. Good morning. Uh, I hope I'm not disturbing you. I, I was out in the garden this morning, and these were so beautiful. I thought perhaps Mrs. Craig... Oh, that was very friendly Claire. of you. Claire! Yes, Harriet? Will you please come upstairs? I need someone who can help me. I told you she wouldn't listen. Yes, Harriet. Goodbye. M Mrs. Harold! Here I am, Miss Raymond. Did you find the tissue paper? Yes, miss. Thank heavens. Good morning. Oh, excuse me. Mrs. Craig's mother is ill. She's trying to catch a train. Oh, I'm sorry. If I'd known, I wouldn't have... Well, I'll run along. Mrs. Craig must be so upset. Everyone is. Oh, darling, will you finish with those shoes? Lottie's completely hopeless. Yes. Sir. Hello, Mr. Craig's office, please. And Claire, did you check the makeup kit to see that everything's filled? Yes, Harry. Oh, thank you. Uh, hello, Miss Stanley. This is Mrs. Craig. What time did my husband leave the plant? But it's been over an hour since I called. Did you give him my message? Well, what delayed him? I see. Thank you. Did you find out about the reservations? They could only give us a compartment. But I told you it I wanted the best a... they could do on such short notice, Harriet. Oh, I suppose I should have called myself. Harriet! Harriet! No, dear, this way, please. Oh, darling, I'm sorry I'm late. How's your mother? Is she much worse? She must be. I got a call from the rest home. She has to be moved to a sanitarium immediately. Well, can I help you with your packing? Not now. It's all done. It's time to leave for the station. I got here as soon as I could. We were running a test on a new amplifier. I couldn't leave the lab until it was finished. Harriet, this may be the biggest thing the company's putting out this year, and it's my baby. I couldn't walk out. Darling, I didn't ask you to. Claire, get your coat and hat. But, Harriet, I haven't packed my things yet. Well, why haven't you? Do hurry. Well, I... Go ahead. I'll finish these things. All right, it'll only take a minute. I won't need much. But you can see how it's been all morning. I've just had everything to do. I'm sorry I wasn't here to help oh, you. I suppose it was selfish of me to expect no doubt. It's just that... It's just that at a moment like this, I'd hoped. I know, darling. I couldn't bear the thought of not seeing you again before I left. Do you realize this will be the first time we've been separated since we were married? I wish I could go with you. Well, so do I. It'll be lonely without you. Well, you'll have Claire along. Well, that's hardly the same, is it? Be kind of lonely around here, too. How long will you be gone? A week or ten days. But we'll be talking to each other, won't we? I'll call you every day. Will you? Darling, you better get the bags in the car. I have to talk to Mrs. Harold. Walter. Yeah? Maybe you better not call me. Heaven knows where I'll be from minute to minute. But I can always reach you. And if you're not at home or the office, you will leave word where you are, won't you? I'll carry a phone around with me. Mrs. Harold? Yes, Mrs. Craig? I'd like to go over things with you once more. Remember, Lottie's on this Sunday, and you're on the following. I want to be sure there's always someone in the house. Yes, Mrs. Craig. Where did those come from? Mrs. Fraser brought them over. They're the first of the season. Hm. That's a fresh excuse for a new neighbor barging into your house. Well, there's no place for them here. I'm counting on you, Mrs. Harold, to see that everything continues exactly as it does when I'm at home. Try to make Mr. Craig as comfortable as you can, won't you? I took care of Mr. Craig a long time before he was married. Yes, you've reminded me of that many times. Lottie. Yes, Mrs. Craig? Haven't I told you to use the back way when you go up and down stairs? Yes, ma'am. I just keep forgetting. Well, try to remember. Those stairs will look as bad as they did before with everyone tramping up and down them. I'm sorry, Mrs. Craig. It's just that today has frazzled me so I don't know whether I'm going... Lottie. 
Would you like those roses? You may put them in your room if you wish. Thank you, Mrs. Craig. They're, they're just lovely. <laughs> These blinds must be closed by at least 11.30 every morning. I don't want the sunlight fading, see? Yes, Mrs. Craig. This vase shouldn't be so close to the edge, Mrs. Harold. I believe I've mentioned that before. I'll watch it, Mrs. Craig. Now about the meals. You can finish the veal tonight and order roast for the weekend. I'll write out the rest of the menus on the train and mail them to you. Maybe Mr. Craig will want to eat out now and then while you're away. Mr. Craig will dine at home, Mrs. Harold. Harry, you about ready? Darling, I just made Mrs. Harold promise to fix you a especially good dinner every night. That's fine. We can't let you miss your home-cooked meals just because I'm away. Well, at least that's one thing I won't be missing. Claire! Coming! Please hurry. Goodbye, Mrs. Harold. Goodbye, Mrs. Craig. Goodbye, Mrs. Harold. Goodbye, Miss Raymond. Is she gone? She's gone. I never worked for anybody like her in my whole life. She is particular. Particular? She's peculiar. I bet if she had her way, she'd wrap up this whole place in cellophane. I don't know how you've stood it all this time. Mr. Craig is a very nice man. Now, that's what baffles me. Why would a nice man like him... Why do you think? Oh, won't men ever learn? I'm afraid he won't. She could build a nest in his ear, and he'd never know it. <laughs> Good morning, Mother. Mother. How do you feel today? Better? Here's your thread. And I got you those soft washcloths you asked for yesterday. Brought your present, too. Isn't that pretty? Don't you want to put it on, Mother? Huh? It's yours. There. That's nice. Would you like me to read to you? No. No, thank you. Perhaps you'd like to take a walk in the gardens. You haven't seen them yet. They're lovely. No. I have too much mending to do. I called the office, but he'd already left there. Well, how about the golf club? He'd been there and gone. Well, didn't Mrs. Harold know where he went? Mrs. Harold's not home either. There's no answer at all. Do you mean there's no one in the house? No. And I even had the operator check the line to be sure the phone is working. Hmm. She might be out shopping or something. Call Mrs. Uh, what's her name? The woman who moved in next door. Mrs. Fraser? Yes. And find out from her if, if Mrs. Harold is there. 
I don't intend to have my servants running all around the neighborhood. Yes, sir. Oh, come in, Mrs. Craig. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Well, have you seen your mother this morning? Yes, I just left her. I'm terribly worried, Doctor. She doesn't seem to be getting any better. Is there nothing more we can do for her? We're doing everything we can, Mrs. Craig. You see, some people find circumstances too difficult to deal with. And they take various means of escape. One is to withdraw into a sort of inner world where nothing can hurt them. That's what's happened to your mother. Before we can bring her out of it, we must learn what has caused it. And that will take a great deal of time and patience. You know about my father, don't you? I only know what your mother has told me. It's his fault. That's where it all started, isn't it? I'm afraid it's not quite as simple as that. Cases like your mother's are rarely the result of any single cause. No, no, I don't blame your father entirely. Well, I do. I was only 14 when he left us. We could have starved to death for all he cared. You have no idea what my mother went through, what we both went through. I'm sorry. How long have you been married, Mrs. Craig? Almost four years. You are happily married, aren't you? Yes, of course. Do you have children? No. I hope you don't have any fears because of your mother. There's nothing hereditary in her illness. No, it isn't that. Mr. Craig doesn't want any. He doesn't like children. I see. I didn't mean to pry into your personal affairs, Mrs. Craig. I was only trying to point out that you have your own life to live. And apparently it's quite different from your mother's. Yes, it is. Good day, Doctor. Good day. Oh, Mrs. Craig. You will be here a few days more, won't you? Yes, Doctor. Then we'll be talking to each other again. Of course. Oh, Dr. Lambert, this is my cousin, Miss Raymond. How do you do, Miss Raymond? How do you do? Well, will you excuse me? Uh, certainly. What did you find out? I talked to Mrs. Fraser. She hadn't seen Mrs. Harold. Not at all. No. She said she hadn't seen anyone around the house all day. Strange. Claire, I think we'll take the train back tonight. There's nothing more I can do for Mother anyway. Shall I wire Walter? No. No, I think not. You're not worried about Walter, are you, Harriet? No, I was just thinking. I don't like trains. Why not? I don't like the feeling of being rushed along in the darkness. Having no control. Putting my life completely in someone else's hands. When you got married, did you feel something like that? No, I didn't. But the average woman does put her life completely in someone else's hands. Her husband's. That's why she usually comes to grief. But don't tell me you were thinking about marriage. Oh, no, of course not. Then why did you ask? You're not pinning your hopes on that young man who works with Walter, are you? No, I was just wondering. <laughs> Every girl thinks about marriage sometimes. Yes, but the trouble is most of them think of it in terms of romantic illusions. Marriage is a practical matter. A man wants a wife and a home. A woman wants security. But you had that before you were married. Oh, yes, I had a good job. I'd come a long way from working in a laundry. 
But I don't mean just economic security. I mean emotional security. The assurance that you can be absolutely certain of your husband at all times, without any fears and without any doubts. You certainly trust Walter, don't you? So long as I know exactly what he's doing, yes. But if he does anything I think might lead to trouble, I find a way to put a stop to it. You see, no man's born ready for marriage. He has to be trained. Have you done that with Walter? Well, of course I have. Doesn't he mind? You don't think I'd let him know, do you? There's some things you just don't tell men. Well, you must be right, because your marriage is perfect. I've never seen a man so devoted to his wife as Walter is to you. Yes. Yes, he is, isn't he? Mrs. Harold? She's not here. Are you sure? She wouldn't dare leave things like this. Oh, don't bother, Harriet. I'll clean it up. Claire, take those roses out of here. Hello, sleepyhead. You real? Don't I look real? Feel real. <laughs> I've seen you for a week, madam. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't stay away any longer. Mm, you sure is. <laughs> you won't. <laughs> That's my beautiful wife. Mm, weary. Gee, I missed you. Yes, I can imagine. From the looks of things downstairs, you were all alone last night, just pining away for me. Mm. Must be a terrible mess down there. It is. Well, you see, Billy blew into town yesterday afternoon. Billy? 
Yeah, Billy Berkmeyer. He just got back from Japan. How exciting. Oh, you're telling me. I can't keep up with him anymore. I thought we'd have dinner and a couple of drinks, and instead we wind up here in an all-night poker game. I won $30. Well, I meant to clean things up this morning, but it was so late when the party broke up last night. Why isn't Mrs. Harold here? Oh, I gave her the weekend off. I didn't think I'd need her. That was very generous of you. I'm sorry, Harriet. I know how you feel about the house. It's more than a house, Walter. It's our home. Treating it carelessly is one thing, but to turn it into a cheap roadhouse for a pack of strangers the minute my back is turned, it's, it's not only disgusting, but disrespectful to me. Harriet, what do you think went on here last night? I don't know, and perhaps I'd better not hear. Well, I told you we just had a poker game. There was no one here you don't know. Billy, the Tiltons, the Schiffers, just the old crowd. And that was all? Of course that was all. Well, let's not talk about it anymore. I'm glad you had a good time. I wish you'd let me know you were coming. I'd have met you at the station. I tried to call you all day yesterday, but no one was home. Oh. Well, well, you see, I... How's your mother? Oh, about the same. The doctor wanted me to stay on, but when I couldn't reach you, well, naturally, I was worried. For all I knew, you might have had an accident. I guess I shouldn't have let Mrs. Harold off. Of course, I didn't realize how much you've been enjoying yourself without me. You don't realize how miserable I've been without you. I suppose now and then you do long for the old days when you were a bachelor, like Billy Birkmeyer, with no responsibilities and nobody's feelings to consider but your own. I wouldn't trade the life I have now for what it was for, for anything in the world. You should have seen me moping around this house all alone last week. Every night when I went to sleep, I saw you in front of me. Did you, darling? Yes. I had some very interesting dreams, too. Remind me to tell you about them sometime. Am I forgiven? Have I ever not forgiven you? Let's not have any more of these separations for a while, hmm? I'll never let you out of my sight again. <laughs> Walter. Walter, you need a shave. Do I? And you're all unbrushed. And undressed. Harriet, shall I make some coffee? What did you say, Claire? I was wondering if you wanted me to make some coffee. Coffee? Is she kidding? Well, yes, will you please? We'll be right there. Darling, we have to eat. How's it with you? Oh, about the same. Good morning, Mrs. Fraser. Good morning, Mr. Craig. Beautiful morning, isn't it? I hope we didn't keep you awake last night. Oh, heavens no. You sound as though you're having a good time. We were, as a matter of fact. Mr. Craig, since you're alone, wouldn't you like to come over and let me fix breakfast for you? My wife just got back. Oh, how nice. Well, thanks anyway. Mr. Craig? Yeah? Could I please see Dick Tracy? Why, sure. He's not in our paper. They left him a prisoner in the ice house last week. Oh, looks like he's in still worse trouble. Gosh. Oh, Danny, what do you think of that? Gee, Mr. Craig. Ooh. Walter, dear, breakfast. They're coming. Good morning, Mrs. Craig. Good morning. Now save those, Danny. I want to read them too, you know. Okay. That kid is getting cuter every day. Yes, he is. How's his mother? Oh, fine, fine. I found some of her roses in the living room this morning. Roses? Oh, Mrs. Fraser, she brought them over Friday afternoon. The radio was on the blink, so I fixed it for her. Really? How did you find out the radio was broken? Oh, I talked to her a couple of times while I was getting the car out in the morning. 
Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Well, she's tending to her roses. That's right. As a matter of fact, that's where she usually is. Of course she is. I must say she's not very ingenious. The funny thing is, I don't think she realizes that everybody knows exactly why she does it. Why she does what? Walter, why do you suppose some women always go around with a dog on a leash? I don't know. Why? Because it facilitates the approach. Approach? Approach to what? To men. To you, darling. Harriet, you wouldn't be jealous, would you? Not at all, dear. I'm just trying to save you embarrassment. And I'm suspicious of well-to-do young widows who specialize in approaches. You're kidding, of course. Walter, you're a very sweet, guileless person. Maybe that's one of the reasons I love you so. Look, if this routine wasn't so Claire, flattering, I... look delicious. Thank you. Hello, Walter. Hi, Claire. How are you? Fine. Hey, how was the trip? Oh, fine, thanks. Hey, Wes Miller was asking about you. Really? Yeah, he was hoping you'd drop him a line while you were away. Why? Why? Oh, come now. He's just fallen for you, that's all. Oh, Walter, stop teasing her. I'm not teasing. The boy wants another date. Speaking of dates, which blonde is Billy Burkmeyer running around with these days? Just got in yesterday. Well, that should be plenty of time for Billy. Is he back from Japan for good? No, he's here on a vacation. Oh, it's good to see him again. I had a wonderful time last night. I hadn't realized how much I missed the old crowd. I thought you said it was me you'd been missing. You know, Mary Tilton said that they hadn't seen us in over a year. And the Schiffers haven't been here in almost two years. You've been very busy, dear. Not that busy. Something wrong, Harriet. I know we haven't been asking them over, but they haven't asked us either. I don't understand. I suppose it's simply because they've never liked me. What? They resent me, particularly the women. Oh, it's ridiculous. And I've always had a feeling, too, that they were rather suspicious of my background. Though heaven knows it's as good as anything they have to offer. Honey, you're dreaming that out. If you're going to let a notion like that bother it you. It doesn't bother me. Because I'm not at all sure they're the kind of people we should be friendly with. Do you mean you deliberately haven't been asking them? I didn't say that, Walter. Look at it from my point of view. Would any woman want that gang in her house? Look what happened last night. I don't want my home turned into a clubhouse. Honey, they're my friends. They played in this house when we were kids. Why, my mother practically raised the entire neighborhood. Perhaps she did, but I'm sure she wouldn't have approved of last night. We played poker in this house every Thursday night for 10 years until 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And my mother loved it. But, darling, I... I didn't think we needed other people around to make us happy. It isn't that I don't like to entertain. As a matter of fact, Claire and I were talking about that very thing on the train. I thought we'd give a dinner party this Saturday night if... Well, that is, if it's all right with you. All right, that's fine. I'd love it. Let's make out a guest list right now. I'll get a pad and write them down. Coffee? Please. Now, let's see. Who would you like? The Tiltons, of course. Yeah. Oh, Joe said they're going to be away next weekend. Oh, that's too bad. The Shippers. And Billy. The Shippers and Billy Burke, my Claire. By the way, should we get a girl for him? Oh, he'll bring somebody. Billy Burkmeyer and friend. Now, who else? It's your turn. Well, I was thinking of the Winstons. You know that nice woman I met at Red Cross? We owe them an invitation. We've only been to their house once. Well, we still owe them. And since they're such good friends of the Norwoods, I thought it'd be nice to ask them, too. They've got kids older than we are. You know who else we should invite? Who? The Fenwicks. Thought we were going to have fun. Is this party for business or for pleasure? Is it so unusual to invite your boss to dinner? You like him, don't you? Oh, he's all right, but they tell me that wife of his is really something. Walter. Come on, let's see who we have. Oh, I'll get it. The Schiffers, Billy and friend. The Winstons, the Norwoods, and the Fenwicks. I'll call them all the first thing in the morning. I don't think you'd better call Billy and Al Schiffer. I don't think they'd have a very good time with that crowd. Why not? Well, for one thing, their arteries haven't hardened yet. Maybe we can have them over another time, huh? Well, all right, dear, if that's the way you want it. Sometime when the Tiltons get back in town, huh? That'd be better. It's for you, Walter. Oh. Hello. Ah, oh, hi, Billy. We just scratched you off our list. <laughs> I'm only kidding. We? Oh, we is my gorgeous wife who just blew in unannounced a little while ago. 
Oh, yeah, hold on a minute. I forgot I'm supposed to play golf with Billy today. Well, that's all right, darling. You go right ahead. I'm a little tired. I think I'll go upstairs and take a nice warm bath and, and lie down for a while. Billy, I don't feel like playing golf today. Well, I think I ought to stay with Harry. It's her first day home. Yeah, we'll play next Sunday. Okay, I'll see you during the week. Hey, take a look, Wes. Up to 18, not bad, huh? Yeah, it's working like a dream. Let me get it, will you? Hello? Hello, is Mr. Craig there? Yeah, he's here. Walter, here, just a second. Say, who is this, Claire? Oh, hello, Wes. I, I didn't know that was you. I knew it was you. I recognized your voice. I was going to call you. How about taking in the ball game with me tonight? Oh, we've already been three times this week. So what? There are a lot of points about the game I still have to explain to you. Well, all right. What time? I'll be ringing the bell about 6.30. Uh, no. You just honk and I'll come out. Bye, Wes. Bye, Claire. Hey, wait a minute. I thought that was for me. Sir, uh, just a minute. Hello, Claire. Harriet says she's sorry she couldn't talk to you herself, but she had to go shopping. And if you should be driving down to the main office today and see Mr. Fenwick, would you tactfully mention the party to be sure he remembers it's tomorrow? Well, tell her he dropped by here this morning and mentioned it himself, so that's all right. Got anything else you want to tell Dreamboat here? Okay, Claire. We'll see you tonight. Bye. Well, now we got you fixed for the evening. Let's get a little work done, hmm? I don't know whether she really likes me or not. It's hard to tell with her. Oh, she's shy, that's all. Well, I don't mind that. In fact, I kind of like it. It's nice to know a girl depends on you. Oh, you know what that remark sounds like? A fellow that's working himself up to matrimony. Matrimony? Hi, Bill. Naughty word, naughty word. I'll have to wash your mouth out with soap. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Berkmeyer. Don't listen to him, Wes. Misery loves company, that's all. You don't know what solid comfort is. Look at him, Wes. I used to look like that. Rolling stone, undernourished, sloppy. Well, I like being a slob. You know, Wes, your boss is an evil fella. He's trying to get you into the same leaky boat he's in. How about it, Bill? Now that you're an old man, don't you ever get lonely for somebody to come home to? I'll take room service. Uh, you don't know what you're missing. Wise may be a little extra trouble now and then, but they're mighty handy gadgets to have around the house. Well, I'll tell you, Walt, I like running water in my house, too, but I want to be darn sure I can turn it off when I want to. Oh, I almost forgot we're still playing golf Sunday. Sure, why not? Well, I was afraid you might be exhausted after that big jam session you're throwing tomorrow night. Well, you heard about that. Well, Harry wanted to ask you and Al Schiffer, but, well, I didn't want you to get stuck with that moldy bunch. Oh, sure, I understand. I saved you from a dull evening, boy. Oh, you're telling me. Never give it a thought. So long, boys. Hey, pick me up about 10.30, will you? Okay. Hey, Bill, why don't you have breakfast with Harriet and me? Oh, well, thanks, but I'll just honk and you come out, huh? I'm sorry I've neglected you all evening, but I've been so busy arranging for the party, and I... Must you smoke that pipe in here? It makes everything smell so. Sorry. Walter, don't sit on the arm. It isn't very strong. And do be careful of the vase, won't you, dear? You don't seem very cheerful tonight. Something wrong? No. Billy dropped by the lab this afternoon. I think he's a little hurt about the party. But you were the one who said we should ask him some other time. 
Yeah, I know, but it was kind of embarrassing. Well, we can't very well ask him now, can we? Come on, let's go to bed. I'm tired. Claire's been absolutely no help to me all week. She's been acting like a giddy schoolgirl. Better get used to doing without her. Looks like you're going to lose her to Wes Miller. As serious as that? Oh, it is with Wes. I'll be surprised if he gets through another week without putting a down payment on a ring. Seems a little hasty to me. Wes knows what he wants. They'll be all right. I hope so. Claire deserves to be happy. I think they've gone to bed. This hour? It's early yet. Harriet's had a very difficult day. Oh. Quite a place. Yes, isn't it? Did you have fun tonight? Oh, I had a wonderful time, Wes. How about tomorrow night? Oh, I'm afraid I can't. Why not? Well, I'll have to watch things in the kitchen. I've hardly helped Harriet with the party at all. You mean you stay in the kitchen all evening? Oh, I'd rather. I'd just be uncomfortable with a lot of people I didn't know. Hmm. Say, uh, how come a smart girl like you isn't holding down a good job someplace? Well, for a while. Oh, Wes, please be careful of that vase. It, it's awfully valuable. It means more to Harriet than anything in the house. Oh, I'm sorry. As I was saying, for a while I had a place in the bank, but well, there's so many things I can do around here for Harriet. You mean you get paid for what you do here? Oh, heavens, Wes. I can never begin to pay Harriet for all the things she's done for me. Why, she took me in last year after my parents died when I had nowhere to turn. I owe so much to her. All right, all right. It was just an innocent question. Oh, Wes. Oh, don't sit on the arm. I don't think it's very strong. I'd rather sit here, anyway. Uh, do you always have to entertain your boyfriends in this... Uh, I think it's a beautiful room. Yeah, but uh, it's not exactly cozy. Anyway, I've never had any boyfriends. What do you mean? I just haven't, that's all. Well, you've got one now. But we've only known each other... Long enough. <sighs> Look. You don't have to be uncomfortable with me. Oh, I'm not, Wes. Honest? Honest. It's just that sometimes I, I don't quite know how I should act. I think you're acting kind of cute. Do you? Claire! Yes, Harriet? I thought you were alone. I didn't realize you had someone with you. Harry, you haven't met Wes yet. This is my cousin, Mrs. Craig. Wes Miller. How do you do? Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Craig. I suppose you know I work for your husband. Yes, I know. Uh, he's quite a guy. Thank you. I hope we didn't disturb you, Harriet. No, not at all. I thought I heard you come in. Wondered if you'd fix me a cup of tea. But it doesn't matter. I'll get it myself. Well, that's all right, Mrs. Craig. I've got to be going anyway. Take care of yourself, Claire. Good night, Mrs. Craig. Good night, Mr. Miller. Oh, Wes, thank you. Oh, don't mention it. I'll be seeing you. Well, you two seem to be getting quite friendly. I'll make your tea right away. No, don't bother. It was only an excuse. I've been waiting up for you. I was worried. You didn't have to be. After what Walter told me. I asked him if Wes was serious about you. Walter just laughed and said, well, what if he isn't? A fling with a guy like Wes who knows his way around might be good for Claire. Walter said that? I was just furious with him. Men are so disloyal. Is that the way Wes feels about me? According to Walter, yes. Wes implied that you could be, well, carried away by the first man who looked at you. 
Apparently, he's been quite successful in that direction. I can't believe it. He seems so nice. Well, obviously, that's his technique. It seems he uses a different approach with each girl. In your case, I guess he felt he must lull you into a sense of security. Did... Did he say that to Walter? Men aren't very sensitive creatures, Claire. They discuss everything with great relish. Now you know why I was worried. Don't let it hurt you too much. It's better to find out about it now, isn't it? I'll make us both a cup of tea. No, Harriet. I'll do it. Please, I'd rather. All right, dear. But bring it upstairs, will you? This has been such a tiring day. I've had to do everything for the party myself. After that dinner, I'll have to start producing again. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed it, Mrs. Fenwick. You've been lovely home, Harriet. Thank you. Everything seems so carefully chosen. Don't you think so, Mrs. Fenwick? Yes, very correct. Walter must be very proud of what you've done with it. Well, you know men, they sometimes like things better the way their mothers had them. <laughs> no, thank you. This was your husband's home? Yes, he was brought up here. What an exquisite vase. Yes, isn't it? Thank you. It's early Ming Dynasty, around 1400. There's a legend connected with the vases of that period. Chinese wives always fill them with rice from their wedding feasts. It was supposed to protect their homes. Nowadays, it takes more than rice. <laughs> <laughs> I agree that changes will come in the communication system. But we must adopt them slowly, or we'll unbalance the whole capital structure. That's quite true. Yes, we must be careful. What do you think, Walter? Hmm? Oh, I'm afraid I didn't get the last part, sir. I said, we must be careful in making changes, or we'll unbalance the whole capital structure. Yes, yes, that's quite right. Henry, stop balancing the capital structure on poor Mr. Craig's head. Yes, please do, because Walter has difficulty enough balancing his checkbook. <laughs> As Harriet's the family treasurer. Well, there's a woman after my own heart. I expect you and I are the frivolous type. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, are you really as good a gin rummy as you boasted at dinner? Do you want me to prove it? Yes. I'm sorry, but I don't think we have any cards. I bought a couple of decks while you were away, remember? Good. Excuse us. See you later, Henry. Watch her. She cheats. Oh, I will. Shall we play three across? Make it easy on yourself. Well, it looks as though my husband walked off with your wife. Well, I'm not complaining. It's a fair exchange. Thank you. Would you like a brandy? No, I think not. Would anyone like a brandy? No, no thank, thank you. you. Perhaps I'd better see what's holding up the coffee. Excuse me. Poor Miss Raymond. She seems so miserable upstairs all alone. I'll bet she's having trouble with a young man. Probably. But I'm sure it doesn't make Mrs. Craig unhappy. If Miss Raymond ever goes up on her own, the madam will have to get along with only two servants. Don't you ever intend to serve the coffee? We've been waiting for quite some time. Well, it's my fault, Mrs. Craig. I thought I'd take a tray up to Miss Raymond. If Miss Raymond can't have her dinner at the regular hour, then she can wait for it. But she's hardly eaten a thing all day. At a time like this, a girl's got to keep up her strength. Really, Lottie? I didn't know my cousin had confided in you. Now look what you've done. I'm sorry, Mrs. Craig. I... Being sorry won't mend the cup. That was my best coffee service. Lottie didn't do it on purpose, Mrs. Craig. I didn't ask for your opinion, Mrs. Harold. Will you please take the coffee in? My guests are still waiting. Very well, Mrs. Craig. I don't know what's the matter with me tonight. Perhaps if you'd spend more time thinking about your duties instead of prying into other people's I affairs... I just felt sorry for her, Mrs. Craig. You seem to feel sorry about almost everything, don't you, Lottie? Well, that's not good enough. I refuse to put up with your stupidity and clumsiness any longer. But, Mrs. Craig... You'll pack your bags and leave here the first thing in the morning. I'll have Mrs. Harold give you your wages. Minus the cost of the cup. Walter doesn't suit you. 
Haven't you a, a nickname? Well, they used to call me Bink, but Harry didn't think it was dignified. Bink, I like that. My name is Celia. I can't very well call you Celia and your husband, Mr. Fenwick. Oh, I'll call him Henry. That's what I call him in my gentler moods. Oh, Celia, I want you to meet an old friend. Mrs. Harrell, this is Mrs. Fenwick. Oh, how do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Fenwick? Care to uh, sweeten that up with a little brandy? That fool doctor of mine says that I'll drink myself into an early grave. <laughs> Napoleon, it's way in back. I know. Whose drawer? Yours. Mrs. Harold was your housekeeper before you were married, wasn't she? How did you know that? Play cards. No one cares for brandy tonight, Mrs. Harold. I've already asked them. Mr. Craig asked for it. Oh, you've got me. <laughs> Four ninety-two to eighty-nine. I'll take it over. Guess I'm in the wrong league. <laughs> well, perhaps you haven't been playing enough lately. I'll have to practice on Billy Berkmeyer. Oh, when's he going back to Japan? Next month, lucky stiff. Oh, I seem to detect a slightly wistful note. Well, I'm interested in the new system we're installing over there. I helped develop it, you know. Is that the only reason? Well, it'll be nice to take the trip. I've never been out of the country. As a matter of fact, I've never been anywhere very much. I think I got a first-class case of the traveler's itch. Why haven't you and your wife any children? That's our biggest disappointment. The doctor told Harriet she couldn't have any. So we have to talk about it anymore. Oh. Two orders of brandy. Oh, didn't mean to bother you, dear. No bother, darling. Thank you. I thought you two would have finished your game by now. We've started another. Discard, Bink. Harriet! You haven't shown me the rest of the house. May I see it now? Certainly. Will you excuse me, please? Gin! Oh, no! <laughs> How much do I make? You killed me. <laughs> 10, 20, 30, 39. <laughs> Oh, they must have slipped out of my hand. I'm getting absent-minded in my old age. I'd hate to play you ten years from now. <laughs> well, they say it takes a rogue to catch a rogue. Celia, <laughs> if this happens again, I'm going to have to call the house detective. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you tell me Walter Craig was so amusing? I never knew him socially until tonight. Well, he's a very charming boy. How is it his work? He's the best sound engineer we have. He's developed several of our basic patents. Then he might be a valuable man in that communications job in Japan, mightn't he? Yes, yes, I suppose they would get the job done faster. And if he managed it well, that might lead to better things in the company, mightn't it? Yes, yes, it might. Uh, what's going on in that conniving brain of yours, Celia? Well, you've been looking for a new executive who understands the technical end, who can also get along with people. Now, it seems to me that Walter Craig has gone as far as he can in the laboratory and is ready for something more important. I never thought of him in that light. Very good man, of course, but he's always seemed satisfied where he is. Walter Craig has more sides to him than you've had the opportunity to observe. Of course, he might not want to leave his wife. He's devoted to her. Couldn't she go along? Mm, afraid not. Army restrictions. Oh, well, that would complicate matters, wouldn't it? However, it's worth a try. A short separation is sometimes the best thing for a marriage. I don't think the Craig's marriage needs anything. He has a sensible wife who's made him a fine home. He's a very fortunate man. <laughs> well, isn't he? Harriet Craig is a very good-looking woman. <laughs> I heard you were in town. You're a sight 
for sore eyes. So are you. You're getting younger every day. How do you do? <laughs> oh, come now, Mr. Berkman. I'm getting fat. And you know it. Not for me, you're not. No, sir, you're just right. <laughs> oh, Mr. Oh, sure. <laughs> I don't like these scrawny modern girls. No, sir. You've been true to me. You know I have. Good. Where's Mr. Craig? He's not home yet. Oh. Well, maybe I better go out and come back again later? No. Why don't you just wait for him? He'll be here in a few minutes, I'm sure. Well, if you don't think he'll be too long, is Mrs. Craig here? It's all right. She's upstairs. Oh. Make yourself comfortable. Okay. You'll have to excuse me. I've got a pie in the oven. <laughs> I'm cook and housekeeper both today. Oh, no cook. Not since last Saturday. Same old reason? Same old reason. Oh. Oh, hello, Harriet. Hello, Billy. It's nice to see you. Well, it's nice to see you. Gosh, you're just as beautiful as ever. Thank you. <laughs> I see you haven't changed any. Oh, men don't change much after the age of 12. No, I'm afraid not. Sorry we haven't had you over, but things have been rather hectic lately. Yes, I know. Walter told me. Uh, how is your mother? Much better. Fine, fine. Well, cigarette? No, thank you. Mind if I do? No. Oh, thank you. Well, I guess I don't want one either. I didn't know I was going to beat Waller home, but I had to rush right over to congratulate him. It's a swell break for him, and for me, too. Yes, sir. There's nobody I'd rather take a walk around the block with, let alone a plane trip to Japan. Japan? That's right. Walter and I together, we'll do a great job over there. Oh. Oh, you... you haven't... Oh, Berkmeyer, you sure put your great big foot in your great big mouth. Look, Harriet, pretend I didn't say a word. Pretend I wasn't here. Pretend you never heard of me. Billy! Walt! Are we gonna take a little trip, son, or are we gonna take a little trip? Sure, Walt. We're Come going on. to sail over yeah. the ocean. Walt. We're going Walt. to sail over... What's the matter with you? Oh, Harriet. Bye, Harriet. Billy told you, didn't he? Wasn't I supposed to know? Oh, sure, but I wanted to tell you myself. I was going to phone, but with news like this. When did you find out about it? Just this afternoon. Family called me in out of the blue. I told them I wanted to talk to you, but I was sure it'd be all right. How long would you be gone? Oh, not too long. Three months at the outside. That may not seem very long to you. Weren't you the one who said we should never be separated? I don't like that part of it either, but... Well, it's under the army. There's nothing we can do. Well, let's think about it later, shall we? There's still plenty of time. I'm afraid there's not. I told him I'd let him know tomorrow morning. I've got to take off in ten days. So soon? Well, the sooner I go, the sooner I get back. Yes, but shouldn't we discuss this? You, you can't... Hey, this is a big promotion. I'll have charge of the whole job. It'll get me out of that lab. I'll, I'll see new people, new things. I'll have a chance to see one of my jobs in operation. Yes, I know. The trip will be wonderful for you. But what about me? Have you thought of what it would mean to me? To our marriage? I've seen this sort of thing happen before, Walter, to other people. A man gets ambitious, restless. And the first thing you know, his job and his friends become more important to him than his wife and his home. But there'll be other trips. You'll be able to go with me. But what about the times I won't be able to go? Oh, don't you see, darling? I don't want anything to happen to us. It's so easy for two people to drift apart. Not if they love each other. But it isn't as though you need a better job. We have enough already. And we've been so happy. Why do we have to change? Well, you don't seem to understand. This isn't going to change anything. It's just a... Well, I've been getting stale lately. I don't know. I seem to be in a rut. Maybe it's middle age creeping up on me. This job's the best thing that could happen to me. You wouldn't want me to give it up, would you? No. No, of course not. Are you 
you go on upstairs, get ready for dinner, and I'll mix you a cocktail. Did you give Mrs. Harold the shopping list? Yes, I did. Has she gone? She just left. Good. Hand me the phone, will you please? Thank you. Okay, be an angel and get me my shoes, will you? Sure. Mr. Craig's office. Hello, Miss Stanley? Is my husband there? Oh. Well, will you transfer me to the lab? Darling, I hope I'm not disturbing you. I wondered if you'd like me to come into town today and have lunch with you. My bag and gloves. You'll be going away soon, you know. Oh, gosh, honey, I'm terribly sorry, but I'm up to my neck here getting things ready to ship to Japan. I can't possibly get out of here for hours. No, I understand. But you will try to come home early tonight, won't you? These last few days, I want to be with you as much as possible. Well, I want to be with you, too. Do you? You're sweet. Goodbye, darling. Claire, after I've gone, I want you to lock my door and see that no one comes in here. Yes, Harry. I think I've given Mrs. Harold enough errands to keep her busy for a while. If she should get back before I do, you tell her I'm resting and don't want to be disturbed. And don't tell anyone, not anyone, that I left the house this afternoon. All right. I don't know what I'd do without you. Yes? Mrs. Craig to see you, Mr. Fenwick. Mrs. Craig? Yes, sir. Oh, by all means, show her in. My dear Mrs. Craig, I am glad to see you. I do hope you'll forgive me for not calling for an appointment. Of course. It makes for a very pleasant surprise. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Well. I do hope you won't think me the typical inquisitive wife, but I do want to know more about this new assignment of Walter's. I realize, of course, it's a wonderful opportunity, but well, Japan seems so far away. Oh, I see. Well, I don't think you need worry about him. He'll be well taken care of. Most of the time, our men are put up at a very good hotel in Tokyo. The food is excellent, well, I hear. I didn't mean that exactly. I'd like to know more about what kind of job it is. For instance, will Walter have many more responsibilities than he has now? Naturally. This isn't just a trip to Japan, you know. It's quite a promotion. Yes, he told me. But will he be responsible for any of the company's money? Well, he may have to okay a few payroll vouchers and that sort of thing, but... I mean, will he be handling any large sums? Why, no. No. That's all I really wanted to know. Thank you for being so kind. For just a moment, Mrs. Craig. Oh, please don't ask me to explain. But you've asked some rather strange questions. Don't you think you owe me an explanation? Yes, I, I suppose so. If there's something I should know, I'd be very grateful. Oh, please understand, Mr. Fenwick. Walter's a fine man, and no one knows that better than you. But it's just that, well, sometimes he just seems to lose all sense of responsibility. Indeed. I've always thought him most reliable. So long as he's in his present job, yes. And so long as I'm nearby to look after him. But if he were 6,000 miles away with no guiding hand, well, I... Just what is it you're afraid might happen? You see... Walt is very naive about the people he attaches himself to. He likes to have fun. But with the wrong crowd, he's apt to go too far. 
With a drinking crowd, he drinks too much. With a different crowd, there have been different problems. Well, I must say this is a surprise. I've always imagined Walter would be able to take care of himself. Yes, you would think so, wouldn't you? I didn't know about all this before we were married. When I came in the house, Mrs. Harrell confided in me. She told me that Walter picked up with some gambling acquaintances and that he'd lost almost all of his mother's estate. And what's worse, as executor of the estate, he'd even lost Mrs. Harrell's tiny legacy. Good heavens. Of course, since we've been married, he's behaved very well. He loves his work. Nobody knows better than you how loyal he is to the company. Yes, I do indeed. Maybe I shouldn't be so worried. Maybe by now he could take care of himself. Perhaps. But I wonder if either of us can afford to take that chance. You're the best judge of that, Mr. Fenwick. Well, I've taken up enough of your time. Thank you so much. Oh, just one more thing. I've always tried to keep Walter from knowing how much I worry about him. You won't tell him of my little visit, will you? You were kind enough to take me into your confidence. You may also rely on my discretion. You've been very understanding. Goodbye, Mr. Fenwick. Goodbye, Mrs. Craig. Calls me in, talks to me like a father, then tells me the trip is off. I think he was doing me the favor of my life. Then before I can find out what's up, ducks into a conference. Didn't you get anything out of him at all? Only that I'm too important a man to be that far away from the lab. That's a lot of malarkey. Of course it is. If he needs me that much here, why didn't he find it out yesterday, the day before? Why now? Uh, Shorty, two more here. Yes, sir. What burns me is he won't level with me. You know, for two cents, I throw the job right in his face. Oh, take it easy. I'm just as disappointed about this as you are, but let's not go into a tailspin, huh? But I don't get it either. If there is something back of this, it must have come up between noon and three o'clock. How come? Well, just before lunch, he was dead set on your going. In fact, he was bragging about what a smart dame his wife was to get the idea. You know you just gave me one. You can choke down those drinks by yourself. I'll make a stab at it. What's up? Mrs. Fenwick is a smart dame. Smart enough to be able to find out why her idea misfired. I'm going to pay her a visit. If you need me. Oddly enough, I'll be right here. Aren't you the little Fraser boy? Yes, ma'am. I came over to see if Mr. Craig could fix my radio. Well, I'm very sorry, but Mr. Craig isn't home yet. I know. Miss Harold told me. Why is he so late? I've no idea. But as soon as he arrives, we're having dinner. We've already had our dinner. Isn't that nice? Then why don't you be a good little boy and let us have ours? Okay. Besides, your mother will worry if you stay away any longer. Well, I'll come back after he's finished dinner. I'm afraid that'll be too late. And Danny. Tell your mother if the radio needs attention, I'd suggest she call a qualified repair man. Oh, no, ma'am. I'd rather have Mr. Craig fix it. Mrs. Harold. Yes, Mrs. Craig? Did you ask the Fraser boy into the house? Little Danny, well, yes. I, I was under the impression it was up to me to decide whom we wish to have as guests. Danny's a very well-behaved boy. Surely there's Mrs. no... Mrs. Harold, when will you get it through your head? This is not your house. I never supposed it was. What I sometimes forget is that it's no longer Mr. Craig's. What did you say? It makes no difference what he wants or who he wants in this house. It's only your wishes that count. Are you trying to suggest that I haven't made Mr. Craig a good home? I'm sure you think you have, Mrs. Craig. 
But my idea of a good home is one that has a little warmth and friendliness in it. Why, when I walk through this house, I have the feeling that these rooms have died and have been laid out. I refuse to tolerate such insolence from a servant. You won't have to, Mrs. Craig. From now on, I'm no longer in your employ. You mean you're leaving? Yes. I've had my fill for some time. You see, I am a servant, but not in the way you mean it. I've only stayed this long because of Mr. Craig. Don't you think the least you could do is give me notice? You didn't give Lottie much notice last Saturday night. That was different. What's different about it? The only thing was that Lottie wanted to stay, and I don't. I'm only unhappy about leaving Mr. Craig, though I'm sure you'll be able to explain that. Oh, come now, Mrs. Harold. We mustn't do anything we'll be sorry for. You won't be sorry, Mrs. Craig. You'd have liked to have gotten rid of me long ago, because I might be a reminder to Mr. Craig of how much happier he was before he ever met you. You've managed to pull the wool over his eyes so far, but I wouldn't count on that lasting forever, if I were you. Very well. You can go. The only reason I've kept you this long is because I knew at your age it would be difficult for you to find another job. Don't you worry about me, Mrs. Craig. Nobody belonging to me ever ended up in the poorhouse. Claire. Yes? You and I will have to serve the dinner tonight. Do you mind? Of course not. But I had to let Mrs. Harold go. She's become absolutely impossible. You've dismissed her. Yes. She's rude and inefficient. And... But Harriet... I know. It'll be an awful shock to Walter. He's so sentimental about her. So don't mention it tonight. I'll tell him about it tomorrow. Thank you. Hello, darling. My, but you're late tonight. What kept you? Too many goodbye drinks with the boys? Could be. <laughs> well, Claire and I fixed you a very nice dinner. Really? Where's Mrs. Harrell? She isn't feeling well. She has a terrible headache. Well, that's too bad. Will you try one of these? No, thank you. What's the matter? Aren't they crisp enough for you? No, they're perfect. Like everything else you do. I just don't want any. Cigarette? No, thanks. I'll fix you a fresh drink. To what do I owe this special attention? I feel very wifely tonight. Oh, dear, there's no soda. I'll get you some ice, too. No, just as it is, please. All right. You look tired. Did you have a hard day? That depends on what you'd call a hard day. I had a conference with Mr. Fenwick. Oh? I suppose he wanted to clear everything up before you leave. No, he wanted to tell me I'm not going. Not going? But why? It seems I'm too great a brain to spend my time traveling. Oh. oh, I'm so sorry. But it's very complimentary, isn't it? If you believe it. Don't you? No. And neither did Celia. Celia? Mrs. Fenwick. I went to see her. Since the trip was her idea, I thought she might have the answer. Did she? No. So she called Mr. Fenwick. What did he tell her? 
Exactly what he told me. Well, then. At first, Celia's a very persistent woman. Excuse me. Oh, good evening, sir. I'll have the express company call for my trunk in the morning, Mrs. Craig. Mrs. Harrow, just a minute. Where are you going? I'm leaving. Leaving? I'm very sorry, sir. What's this all about? I was going to call you tomorrow. I'll let you hear from me as soon as I get settled. What is all this? Ask Mrs. Craig. I'll explain it later, Walter. I want Mrs. Harrell to tell me. It wouldn't be any use, sir. That'll be my taxi. Goodbye, Mr. Craig. I'm sorry. So she had a headache. Darling, I tried to keep her from leaving. I bent over backwards to please her because I knew how attached you were to her. But she's resented me ever since I came into this house. You don't know what I've had to take from her. Then tonight, she just suddenly decided to quit. Why didn't you tell me she quit? Why did you say she had a headache? Well, I didn't want to upset you tonight. Tonight? Why not tonight? Well, I knew you'd be disappointed about your trip, and I... But you didn't know the trip was off when I first came home, when I asked about Mrs. Harold? Or did you? Well, I... Harriet... Excuse me. Dinner's ready. Oh, thank you, dear. Walter, do come in. Dinner will get cold, and we've worked so hard. I asked you a question, Harriet. How did you know the trip was off? Let's not argue at the table. Please sit down. Was it because you asked Mr. Fenwick to call it off? Because I what? Didn't you see Mr. Fenwick this afternoon? I don't know what you're talking I about. I want an answer, yes or no. Well, how can I even think when you're shouting at me so? I know you're miserable about the trip, but you needn't take it out on me. I'm as unhappy about it as you are. Why? I thought you wanted me to stay here. Well, of course I'm happy you're going to be with well, me. Well, which is it, happy or unhappy? Walter, I wish you wouldn't nag me. I'm only trying to find out what your attitude is. My only attitude is that I love you. Oh, your attitude is that you love me. Of course she does, Walter. Oh, you know about her attitude. Do you also know about this afternoon? What do you mean? Where were you this afternoon? I was home. And where was Harriet? Well, she was... Now, you girls stick together, don't you? No wonder a man never knows what you're up to. And while we're at it, what kind of a game are you playing with Wes Miller? Wes? That's right. First you lead him on, then all of a sudden you're not home when he calls. But he never called. Yes, he did. He called you three times this week and left his number every time. Well, maybe Mrs. Harold forgot to leave the messages. Wes told me he talked to you. Harriet. Dear, I was only trying to save you embarrassment. Embarrassment? About what? Well, Claire decided she didn't want to see him anymore. Why not, Claire? I thought you were in love with him. Well, I was, but Harriet said he... I don't care what Harriet said. I'm telling you, Wes is serious. I know he loves you. Harriet, how could you... What did you tell her? Why would you want to break it up between them? I didn't. Why should I? Do you think I care what Claire does? Well, you should. She's part of your family. Walter, what's come over you? I'd have gotten rid of Claire in a minute if I'd known you resented her being... I never said I resented her! I only let her stay here because she's a relative and had no place else to go. I didn't realize she was so neurotic. She must have dreamed up something about that boy in her own mind. Because heaven knows I begged her to encourage him. Harriet, you're lying. You lied to Claire. You lied about Mrs. Harold. You lied when you phoned me today to find out if the coast was clear. You've been drinking, and I refuse to talk to you while you're in this condition. Why not? you put up with a lot worse than that since you've been married to me. Isn't that what you told Fenwick? I don't know what you mean. Oh, you're a brave little woman to live with a husband like me. Old boozer Craig who can't hold his liquor. Light-fingered Craig who can't be trusted near the cash box. Stinker Craig who gambled away a widow's savings. I didn't say anything of the kind, and I don't believe Mr. Fenwick told you that. Mrs. Fenwick told me. I wouldn't put it past her. She'd distort everything deliberately. How could you do it, Harriet? Well, you're out of your mind. To go to my employer, of all people. A man whose good opinion can affect my whole life. And your life. Walter, you haven't given me one chance to explain. I did go to see Mr. Fenwick, but only to make sure you'd have decent food, a decent place to live, and not be overworked. My thanks for that is that you take other people's word against mine and turn on me like this. Not a tear in sight. How many ways can you lie, Harriet? 
You lie when you cry, you lie when you smile, you lie when you talk. Do you also lie when... Stop you... it! All right, you want the truth, you can have it. I did ask Mr. Fenwick to keep you here, and he understood perfectly. I explained to him how loyal you were to the company. But I also had to tell him how much you need me. How much I need you? Walter, I've done everything I could to spare your feelings. Look at yourself honestly. What were you before I married you? I was a man, as I remember it, with a pretty good life. A good job, good friends, and a good home. You were completely disorganized and irresponsible, and you know it. Why, you've told me a thousand times how much I've done for you. Sure you have. So does every wife. Does that make you my nursemaid? Since when have I been such a moron I couldn't struggle along without you? Where do you get the gall to think you're so superior? Oh, stop yelling. What are you complaining about? You've had your share of the bargain. Bargain? I never thought of our marriage as a bargain. Every marriage is. You wanted a wife to run your house and make you comfortable. Well, haven't I done that? Have I ever neglected you? I've kept myself attractive and seen to it that you were never bored. Whatever you wanted, no matter how foolish or inconvenient it was for me, I've always seen to it that you were satisfied. What more did you want? I've wanted you to be honest with me. To trust me. I've wanted you to love me. Well, that goes without saying. Does it? here any longer. But why? I heard what you said to Walter. Oh, darling, I didn't mean it. I only said that to appease him. Did you? You know me better than that. Why did you lie to me, Harriet? I only I tried... would have done anything for you. I was so grateful. But for you deliberately to, to ruin my chance for a life of my own and, and to care so little what happens to me. I warned you about West for your own good. You can see how difficult marriage is. Your kind of marriage, yes. But there must be another kind. But you can't go now. Walter's causing enough trouble. You mustn't be angry over a little misunderstanding. I'm not angry, Harriet. I just don't want to stay here any longer. You see, I know you now. And I don't like you. All right, you go. But don't come crawling back to me when you find out you can't take care of yourself alone. I hope I won't be alone. Now that I know the truth about Wes. Goodbye, Harriet. Here, Rocky, I'll hold the rope, brace myself against the tree, and you swing out over the gorge. If the rope holds and you make the other side, you can reach Ellen in time to save her life. If not, be with us again next week, same time, when Crispy Crunch will bring you another stirring chapter Let's in the Annie. daring okay, adventures Mom. of Rocky Drew. Gee, Mr. Craig, I wouldn't want to take a chance like that, would you? Mm, I guess not, Danny. Wasn't it neat, Mom? Yes, it was. And wasn't it nice of Mr. Craig to take all this time to fix your radio for you? Yep. Well, then. Thanks, Mr. Craig. Pleasure, Danny. Okay, bedtime. Good night, Mom. <laughs> Good night, darling. Good night, Mr. Craig. Good night, Danny. Danny's very fond of you. He's a nice boy. He's a great comfort to me. Yes, I can see that. Shouldn't you be getting back? We've kept you so long, Mrs. Craig will be expecting you. Yes, she is. Uh, Mrs. Fraser, may I ask you a question? Of course. 
Would you say I'm a man of average intelligence? I would say so. Why? I don't know. Some things I can't figure out. Well. Oh, sorry. Well, that's all right. It shouldn't be in the middle of the floor anyway. Our house is such a mess, and yours is always so tidy. That's one thing you can say for the Craig house. It's always tidy. Yeah. Well, good night. Good night, Mr. Craig. And thank you again. Is that you, Walter? Yes. Are you coming upstairs? No. I think you'd better come down here. I'm very tired, dear, and I'm going to bed. Harriet, I want to talk to you. Walter, I'm completely exhausted. If you want to talk to me, I'll be upstairs. Harriet, I said come down here. Nothing very much. What do you mean, nothing very much? It sounded as though the whole house fell down. Maybe it did. My vase. What happened? How did it fall? It didn't fall. I broke it. You what? I broke it. You must be insane. Why would you deliberately destroy a beautiful thing like this? I didn't like it. I've been putting up with a lot of things around here I don't like. And I'm through with it. Through? That's right. I don't like my share of the bargain. 
Walter, I know you're upset because I went to Mr. Fenwick, and I can't blame you. What I did was wrong, terribly wrong. But I was so panicky, I had to stop you somehow. I realize now I should have told you the truth. I should have come to you the day Dr. Barnes sent for me. Dr. Barnes? Yes. For months now, I've been going to him. You know how desperately I've always wanted a child. I've never given up hope. Well, two weeks ago, he said there was a very good chance. What's Dr. Barnes' number? Well, he wouldn't be in his office this time of night. He must have a home phone. I wouldn't know it. I've never called him there. I imagine information will give it to me. You dare check up on me. You didn't see any doctor, did you? Nobody told you you could have a child. Nobody had to tell me. You mean you can? Yes, I can. And you could have all along? So you lied to me from the beginning. About something you knew meant more to me than anything in this world. I came back tonight to tell you that from now on, I was going to run things in this house. And if you were willing to accept that, we might make a go of our marriage. Because in spite of everything, I still loved you. But this does it. I know now you've never loved me. Tonight, you show me just how selfish and dishonest you really are. No woman dares to be honest. She has to think of herself. Who else is going to protect her? Does she need protection from a man who loves her? You bet she does. I wouldn't trust the love of any man after the things I've seen. I found out all about what you men call love the day my father left us. He always pretended to love my mother, and I worshipped him. And one day after school, I went to his office. I found him with a woman. A cheap, vulgar blonde. What a sight they were. And I saw him for what he really was. A fat old fool with liquor on his breath. He said he was ashamed and tried to tell me it had nothing to do with his love for us. Well, maybe he could fool my mother, but he couldn't fool me. I told him I never wanted to see him again. I hated him, and I'd always hate him. That night, he didn't come home. He never came home. I watched my mother tramp the streets looking for a job. And at 14, I had to quit school and go to work. First in a factory, then in a laundry. We almost starved. So don't talk to me about protection. Don't try to tell me anything about love. I think you're telling me the truth the first time. I believe what you say about your father. And I feel sorry for you. I think I understand you now. You've hated your father, and because of him, you hate me. You hate and distrust everybody. You're at war with the whole world. You'd never feel safe with anybody until you'd crush them. But you're not going to do that to me. I'm going to take that trip as scheduled. But when I come back, it won't be to this house. But you can't just walk out on me. I'm your wife. You have a responsibility. Don't worry, I'll see that you're provided for. And you can keep the house. You'll come back. You'll find out you won't be able to forget me so easily. I didn't say I could forget you. But I won't be back. <laughs>
I just saw Mr. Craig drive away. He left his pipe at our house, and I thought... Thank you. Mrs. Craig, my husband and I used to have little misunderstandings, too, and sometimes he'd slam out of the house. I remember how I used to hate being alone then. If there's anything I can do... Mr. Craig has gone to get a newspaper, Mrs. Frazier. He'll be back in a few minutes. I see. Well, good night, Mrs. Craig. <laughs> 